inviting this event. My name is Jens Völger. I am uh, from the Böblingen lab from IBM. Um, working with uh, SUSE in the mainframe and Linux uh, around 16 years now, I was a uh, manager first um, test and performance and then development. I started with KVM uh, on the mainframe and then I productized the mainframe at uh, the KVM for the mainframe the last one, one and a half years. So I went out of management and therefore please don't expect a real deep technical presentation, but I think for Sunday morning it's much better we have a higher level presentation. So let's start into the agenda. Linux and the mainframe, uh, this is my first talk and the open ecosystem. I want to bring you the mainframe a little bit nearer here. Open mainframe project, mainframe and open SUSE and how you can participate. So it's a real high pedestal. I hope everybody see me down there. Um, first, one question. Do you know this building here? Who knows it? This is the conference building, perfect. First question answered. You can take a bottle down here because I have bottle questions um, included. And what has this conference building and the mainframe in common? Just what? The set, correct. We, or better say, the name, the next bottle here. The building, set, and the mainframe, the IBM is called C Systems. So, and how it all starts with Linux on uh, the mainframe or Linux on C, it began with a few brave guys in the Böblingen lab. Um, their mission was do one brave thing today, then run like hell. Back in 99, a few brave guys from the Böblingen lab started an undercover project with Linux on, on the mainframe. This was not appreciated by the traditional mainframe folks because they uh, thought uh, they will lose business here, all the COS and CVS customers. But um, several times they were uh, instructed to stop, but they have not done. So we see today after 16 years of journey, they run like hell to finish a prototype and prove that it works and this performs now well. By the way, 1999 they started. This is another bottle question. What do you think when we had the first distributions at our customers? Not the SUSE guys, please answer. You get your bottles anyhow. So what do you think? 99, they started with a prototype. First, Richard, hello. First distro out, when? One question, one bottle. Huh? 2000. You can take one. Okay. So, back a little bit in history. 1999, I said they started um, with Linux at the mainframe. Our first distro was in 2000. Um, we had a 16 years journey, and today in the mainframe, we have now 40% 40, 40 of the customers um, have Linux cores running of IBM mainframe. 28% of the total installed capacity runs on Linux. 81% of the top 100 customers are running Linux in the mainframe. So this means um, in 2003, we really started through with, with Linux on the mainframe. And then 2007, we said, okay, eat your own cookies. This means we started the project Big Blue in, within IBM. And this project was consolidating uh, around 3,900 X servers on 30 mainframes within to prove it works and to prove we are scalable and to prove we can do consolidation plays. So um, last year we, we, we started with our uh, Linux One. It's a new brand in IBM and um, to come, in the, in, uh, to come from, from the past to, the, to today and to the future, I want to show you a little bit what is this Linux. Linux is Linux is Linux, even on the mainframe. So this is um, a part of the open source GNU Linux uh, operating system to the IPMC systems architecture. 
This environment uh, is a pure ASCII environment, by the way, uh, and conforms to the Linux standards base. Um, that it runs on a mainframe, we need no emulation or any uh, emulator or something like this. And by the way, there are emulators out like uh, Hercules, um, which is um, a software emulator you can download and you can get it for free and emulate on your um, laptop at home and emulate a C platform. But this is not what we have here on the mainframe. We have it on a pure hardware running. Um, another bottle question. We have some left here. What do you think, how many platform specific code um, we added to the kernel? How many percent? Three percent? You're not bad. It's exactly two percent. I think you get one. Very perfect. Two percent platform specific code we added only. And this is mainly dependent on the drivers, special drivers we have, like nobody want to say this something, but we have testy drivers, we have special I.O. drivers in the hardware, but we have even PCI drivers and PCI um, bus on our hardware right now. So um, other things we change here is 0.3% uh, code in the GCC to, to fit our needs and as well 0.5% platform specific code in the glibc. So not much we changed. This seems like not a lot of work, but it's, um, it's special work, I would say. The most of them it's done in the Böblingen lab here in, in Germany, nearby Stuttgart, and um, uh, all around the world, but uh, the main, main part is here in Böblingen, and we work tightly together on that with our friends from SUSE. Um, all the efforts we do here um, uh, and the contribution um, we discuss in the community and send all these changes upstream to, to the community. Um, and it's worth to mention is well that most of the Linux software packages did not require any code changes to run on the Linux mainframe. So just build and run. No engine, big engine, little engine discussion. It just runs. So, and now, Linux is Linux is Linux. But are all Linux solutions identical? I would say no. The underlying infrastructure, it's, there, it's that what directly affects the Linux workloads. Even when everybody talks about the cloud, even there, it directly affects the Linux workload. Access, speed, and availability matters, which, which means only a few phrases on that. Ability to scale up and out rapidly. Parallel processing and low latency and low latency resources. Efficient virtualization and resource management. This is only a few a few of them, but what is the underlying infrastructure? This is not a question to get a bottle, but we can do a speed test. The first one who is here gets one, because the mainframe is fast. You want one? If you're fast, you can get one. Bottle. Okay. You see, this is like our mainframe, fast and without latency. But you had latency. Do you have one? Okay, perfect. So. Next one is, what is this mainframe? What, what are we talking about? The mainframe has uh, three stages of virtualization. We have logical partitions. This is done by the hardware, which means we can divide our mainframe in up to, oh, how many partitions? I think uh, uh, 600, 60, 600, 60, 60 uh, huh? around 60 uh, right now. Um, so this is done by the hardware, and everyone, thanks our SUSE friends, they have hardware. We haven't, we haven't, no, we need to use emulation. No, um, the LPARs, uh, the logical par partitions are part of the hardware where you can run virtual machines or pure Linux um, operating systems in. Linux guests, we have, uh, 
we can have up to thousands of Linux guests uh, on a single C C13. So this means virtual servers, the latest and greatest model supports up to 8,000 virtual servers. The CPU is, I would say, the fastest one in the market, 5 to 2 gigahertz with 6, 7, or 8 cores. Uh, what we have special there, we have special dedicated, and this can be up to 640 I.O. processors. So I.O. is done by, not by the CPU, I.O. is done in a, in a subsystem, where we as well have a channel subsystem um, where special processors um, works. Um, so no, not the CPU is, uh, is the one who, who needs to do all this, this effort. Up to 10 terabyte, um, which is three times faster than the previous model, and we have up to 141 configurable cores, which can be shared across all the logical partitions. So, and as well, we have then, in one logical partition, you can run virtu virtualization management or virtualization software, which is our old, 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 traditional and mature um, CVM, and it's as well our new baby in the, uh, in the market, it's KVM for IBM C, which we uh, announced last year and uh, first G8 it. So other things like level four, uh, uh, level one to level four caches, um, we have included very fast SIMT and SMD to be in the market um, and have um, a huge footprint here on the mainframe market. So, what is, um, but let's talk about some real advantages of the mainframe. Um, Agility is also built into mainframe hardware. It's flexible, modular, adaptable to new services, technologies, and so on. You may know the scale cube. It's X, Y, and C scaling. In contrast to an X platform, we are able to scale horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. From the cores, memory, PCI slots, and other peripheral hardware in the mainframe, you can add resources to the running Linux guests, even dynamically. This means on the fly. So we have Y scaling here. Or you can easily clone more Linux guests with a high degree of resource sharing. So this means you can even share cores between the guests and between the logical partitions. This means um, on the hardware in the LPAR, in the logical partition. So several logical partitions can share the resources, which make it really efficient. Um, so at the end, we do not have only an X and Y scaling, we have as well an C scaling, which means it's diagonal. This is how the mainframe is provisioned for peak utilization and relocates unused resources automatically after a peak. So what is another thing we have? Workload management or mainframe utilization. And next, the next question here, what do you think, which diagram is, um, which diagram is the mainframe? The above or the below? 50-50 chance. Above? Take one, whoever said it. I have several more in the car outside, so I can give you later on uh, more bottles. So, um, this is right, the one above. We have a high utilization, uh, around 99% utilization on this hardware. This uh, CPO study uh, was uh, the CVM, and, uh, and this I need to read now because I don't have it completely in my mind. The CVM environment test consists of two LPARs. One LPAR holds 10 high priority workloads, and uh, the other one holds 14 low priority workloads. LPAR rates were 99.1% in favor of the high priority work. So this means the CVM test was done using two logical partitions sharing 32 cores on a mainframe. The X86 hypervisor environment 
uh, test consists. And by the way, we even did not run any hypervisor there on, on the mainframe. Um, the x86 hypervisor environment has consists of 24 guests, as well 10 high priority workloads and 14 low priority workloads. High priority guests weights as well 99% of the available guest megahertz. Low priority guests are 1% of the available guest megahertz. The hypervisor test was done using 24 guests on a Westmer X7143 40 core server running current hypervisor te technology. This was back in 2013, to be fair, I know, but even today, the numbers are not quite different. So the side-by-side -side comparison shows the difference in the abilities of C systems to maintain high and low priority workload. The x86 hypervisor is unable to handle both high priority and low priority workloads uh, together without a huge adverse effect on the high priority work. So the net result of it, wasted CPU. And this is how we leverage and how we um, do the mainframe ut utilization with our workload management, included in the hardware, included in our virtualization. So next one is, because all of that, diagonal scaling, workload management, it's, um, it's a consolidation play what we can do. As I already said, we, have, we can have a full room of servers one foot, on one footprint uh, with the size of a refrigerator. And this is not much bigger. Um, American refrigerators are in this size, believe me. And mine as well, maybe, yeah? So this means 8,000 virtual servers here. And to make this a little bit transparent, I hope this works now, I want to run a video. Only one minute, not one and a half hour. So let me see. Be haste. This is it. This is this way, this way. What happened? Everything happened. Uh, I, I called you as soon as I could. Tell us what I was trying to get called, but everything's gone. You want me to show the call? Is, is, is it possible that it's an inside job? Wait, wait. I mean, we're inside. Yeah. 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 It's got to be pros, these guys. Calm down, sir, and tell us what I can't happened. breathe. I need my pills. This way. The room's completely empty. What was stolen? Everything. 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 Payroll, R&D, customer records. Assets. All of the assets. How could they get everything? How do I know? You're the cops. I say, look, pal, we're the only friends you've got. How much money are we talking? A lot. Millions. 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 All the assets were in this room? Ned, the servers. They stole all our servers. No, we moved everything onto that one. It's going to save us a bundle. I sent out an email. IBM servers running Linux. What's a server? Good infrastructure. It can save you a bundle. So, what's the server? They stole all our servers. By the way, this is video is um, a little bit aside. It's, it's uh, what it was made in the World Trade Center below. It's, uh, therefore, it's very um, worth to see these things. Because all of that and all the technical aspects and these numbers that 92 of the top 100 worldwide banks, 10 out of 10 of the world's largest insurances, 23 of the top 25 retailers. And now this is a little bit marketing and um, 23 out of the 25 world's largest airlines, they run all the mainframe. Why? 30 billion business transactions processed uh, on the mainframe per day. 91% of survey CSO, CIO said that the new customer facing applications are accessing the mainframe. These are numbers which took us to the assumption that we need to take Linux and the mainframe to new highs. This means Linux your way, Linux without Linux, limits Linux without risk. And I go briefly over this chart now um, because I want to tell you a little bit about the facts, about the background, not a technical one, but the performance data. We, um, um, we, we measured here with our new Linux One mainframe, Linux One server. So 
uh, Linux without limits, not only a marketing campaign, it measurements between a mainframe and x86 has well revealed that numbers that uh, in, in a comparison um, um, rack by rack, yeah, uh, no SQL database like MongoDB, MariaDB on a mainframe performs two times faster than on other platforms. Um, compression hardware to save Spark uh, res uh, resilient distributed data sets run four to nine times faster and persists Docker containers four times faster. The mainframe and his hardware encryption uh, encrypts all the data 20 time, 28 times faster because we're doing it on the hardware. We have real hardware integrated to do, to do the uh, encryption on that. Node.js runs up to two times faster. Spark Analytics uh, runs up to three times faster here. Who want to deal with shared databases when you have a server that can handle terabyte databases with over 2 million documents and 470,000 read writes per second? Uh, and remember, all this speed and scalability is um, for just one Linux server. You can cluster these servers together uh, to scale out as well to have even more scalability, not only scalability in, one class in one mainframe, scalable mainframes. So a lot of customers have this. We have a lot of customers, customers which are running several of these beasts here um, without any, without any virtualization, just logical partitions. They run it Linux on the real mainframe. Huge customers, for example, like ADP. No, ADP is running with CVM, but others. Um, has this. So, um, behind uh, this YouTube link, here you find a financial trading demo who proves this and who shows you how combined unstructured data with structured data using real-time analytics. We have uh, this done all with open source products. Apache Spark is behind. Docker containers, Swarm Compose, all these things. Um, if you are interested, you can have a look. So. Linux and the mainframe without risks. What is that? We are proud on our mainframe because we have a high grade of um, security built in. And I don't want to go too much in detail here, but the mainframe is designed for the highest level of security and the lowest downtime, EIL5, for example. I know a customer, and I met a customer last year, and this surprised me as well, who has running CVSE, which is another mainframe operating system. Um, question, how long do you think this mainframe runs now without any planned or unplanned outage or maintenance downtime? What do you think? Years. Not bad? Huh? Six. Six years? You come better? No, 15 is too high. Huh? No, too low. Nine is not bad. I would say you got the bottle. Um, it's 10 years now. And I was surprised by myself. The system is up. Did you say 10 years? Sorry, I didn't hear you. It's uh, maybe... I'm sweating. It's water in my ears right now. No. <laughs> It's uh, warm here. You get one bottle as well. Okay, 10 years up and running. And I met this customer last, last year, then it's maybe 11 years now, but you get this bottle. The point is, it's proven and it's solid and rock solid. So, um, just a few things what the mainframe has to be a, a server without risk. Data protection with hardware enforced isolation. Fully checked hardware and memory for data integrity. Hardware protection secure by cryptographic hardware and firmware designed to protect from errors that could lead to outages and build in redundancy for all critical system components, eliminate single point of failures. Everything is redundant in this uh, mainframe. Therefore, the mainframe is a little more expensive than another platform. But think about this consolidation. Um, you save a bundle of uh, software license cost. So, Linux on the mainframe, your way, the ecosystem. 
What did we do then? And um, why, Linux, why Linux your way? First, we want to offer our customers a wide range of products they, used, they are used to and, and they like. Second, we wanted to prove the mainframe is, a, is not a boring platform. Um, we talk about dinosaurs and these things, but it's not a dinosaur anymore. It's uh, not boring, and it's open for everyone. You will see it later on. Third, we, IBM, has a long history in open source, and we want to collaborate more now, not only in, on, on, on Linux. We want to collaborate as well on the open source products with, with the communities. We want to share our things. We want to give back the assets we produce as well in the open source uh, packages and the open source products. Therefore, we started in uh, IBM with a team in Toronto with the mission to create a um, rich open source ecosystem to enable Linux on the mainframe as a target platform for new, um, for new application deployment. So the team starts porting and testing assets across these, these categories you see here, especially in the languages, runtime, um, management and database and analytics parts. The distributions, um, this is the Böblingen lab which um, works since 16 years, 15, 16 years with our friends, with the distributors here, the hypervisors we most likely have by ourselves. Um, but um, the team in Toronto uh, a, a partner with the key open source ISVs for both their community and their enterprise versions of the product. Um, and they are present as well in open source communities, which is important to give the feedback and contrib contribute here with enhancements. So all the ecosystem investment is discussed as well with our customers uh, to pri provide solutions. As you can see here on the chart, the most important products are enabled to run on the mainframe. So the mainframe is not boring the mainframe starts through. This is my personal opinion. Um, and all these can't be done alone, for sure. We cannot, we cannot do all these alone. Therefore, we need to work together with relevant communities, and this is what we do here. Um, we, are, we are in IBM. We have the Linux Technology Center, where I'm part of. We have uh, Linux One Community Cloud. I will tell you later about that a little bit. We have academic initiatives and training programs, IBM research pro projects here, and open source community contributions. As well, we work together. I talk about these two, uh, two things later on with IBM and OpenSUSE. We start working on that right now since January, and the Open Mainframe Project. So. How do you get, how, do you, how, you, how, how can you contribute here on that? Or how can you see what we are doing with especially these open source packages? Um, we have a one-stop shop here in, in the internet. You, I think you will get the charts later on. Uh, Richard, you provide the charts? Okay, so you can click on these and you can come there and can see what packages are ported or what packages are enabled for the mainframe. You get their information, you can you can give us feedback, you get build recipes and how-tos on GitHub, but take, uh, um, and, and we look forward here for hearing from you, for your feedback, and may, may we work together here sometimes in the future. So now, to open mainframe project. Um, the Linux Foundation is the parent company of the open mainframe project. As you can see here, on this chart, there are several different areas defined where the Linux Foundation has collaborative projects uh, like CentOS, Cloud Foundry, Tyson, and more are running here. Last year in 2015, uh, driven by Stephen Dickens, he's the guy who normally should do this presentation, and he asked me to do this on a short notice last Wednesday. So I'm not Stephen Dickens. If you think about it, somehow, uh, somehow in the in the agenda, um, but he started with this project, and um, we we started the Open Mainframe project. Where else? 
could it better fit than in the operating system area up here with all the others? And the most important point, the Linux Foundation works, and this is what we wanted as IBM, tightly together with the open source community. So, now, okay, now I think I have network here, funny. So, um, and this is not only IBM. IBM is only one member, a member. And this made me, when I, when I digged into this the last few days, this made me as well speedle speechless when I see how rapidly grows the number of members in this in, in, in these, uh, um, open mainframe project. Um, before the background that the mainframe is traditional working horse of IBM. We have Hitachi, we have um, customers um, like ADP, we have universities there, we have uh, our friends from SUSE there, we have Marist College there, and um, they all have one common goal, uh, collaborate and promote Linux on the mainframe, and this is what we want as company uh, IBM. So, what was before 2015 in the Open Mainframe Project? Um, this is, by the way, not a bottle question because you can't know it. So, many users, uh, developers, vendors, but almost all working um, independently on your, uh, or in small groups to improve open source on the mainframe. There was no open hub for interested, uh, for intersection together. For example, let's say when SUSE, our customer ADP, Hitachi, Storage, and IBM wants to do a project together, how do they get together? They had no chance right now. In this open mainframe project, they can collaborate, they can develop, for example, a piece of software which is levering, leveraging the Hitachi storage on a mainframe. So it's much easier right now to collaborate, to work together. As well, the open source software is built in a scratch your own itch model, but unless improvements are shared within a community, the benefits are not realizing the community realized the com by the community, let's say this. Coordinating, um, it was difficult coordinating the enterprise uh, create improvements to upstream projects. Um, it's limited today and could improve the quality of improvements and ease of getting them accepted in the community. Now with the open mainframe project, we hope that it get easily, uh, eas more easily uh, uh, accepted. Events, meetings, and attempts to coordinate are often led by individual vendors. Um, and academic institutions are looking for ways to get their students practicable, practicable experience. This they couldn't have before. So what is the mission of the Open Mainframe Project? This is very easy. Bring together under formal structure an open source technical community with a mutual interest in ad, um, advancing the surrounding ecosystems and adoption of Linux and uh, the mainframe as an enterprise grade platform. Um, open collaboration across academic, government, even government and corporate partners to advance C systems or the mainframe as an enterprise grade platform for, for Linux. Make it more accepted in the, in the open source community. Design and develop shared technology elements, provide development and test resources through a collaboration hub that lowers barriers to joint development activities. I will show you later on how you can access to that. Provide access to free education and information, improve the experience of users of the mainframe platform when running Linux. So, where is the technical focus? We are focusing especially on areas where the mainframe has problems or is problematic. And fixing those problems or this uh, within the open source community. 
Um, and we use especially the power of the open source community to fix it. But that's not all. We, we want to contribute back all the work and, set it up, and send it upstream. So every value we get, we want to give back to the community as well. So, um, right now we started 2015 with Open Mainframe Project, mid of 2015. So this is not such a long time, but um, some, some technical achievements we already have so far. From mid of 2015, um, where we built the community and uh, we have right now seven internships running. The, the, the internship programs just started, uh, so not much um, has been done yet. They run over the summer. Um, they, they have a wide range from, from work, from Docker to Hyperledger, blockchain things and uh, management tools. For ex a great example uh, for a project is one where we are taking all our first failure data capture knowledge and know-how and, and adding it to Docker and to make the latter enterprise ready. So another example which was which I like to, to mention here was the, the Open Mainframe uh, Project Steering Committee identified the need of Open JDK uh, on Linux and C as a gap. We created and advertised a cooperation project in the open source community and drove a bounty source project. This caught SAP, uh, SAP's attention and because they already had a Linux and C part of the Open JDK. So you see what helped it. They agreed to contribute and uh, their Open JDK go to the Open Community. Without the Open Community, we would have done it all by ourselves, or e each individual one is doing by by themselves. And I think this is really cool stuff doing that. So um, I I think because of the time, I skip uh, uh, this chart now. This is how it. Uh, how it, part, how it works together, the technical steering committee and all this other stuff, which how, how, how the open mainframe uh, project is or, organized. I wanna go a little bit further on, on, um, on OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE factory now builds for IBM C system. All the folks making this happen sits down there they get a bottle without asking a question. They made it happen in 2015. Um, Berthold Gulnreben, he's sitting here, he announced it uh, January, I think, that we collaborate here. Um, this is, it, it was a result out of Open Mainframe Project. This means um, the technical steering com uh, uh, committee identified the need that Open Source um, needs or is a must for the open mainframe project. Without that, it wouldn't work. Um, and our friends from SUSE were eager to make this happen. As I said, January, it was announced and now they started, um, uh, or, or now we have an external build uh, in SUSE open build service and this is up and running and the community is highly highly welcome to support on this. So what are we doing to start on that? V means IBM to start on that. Um, the IK IBM ecosystem in Toronto, I already talked about them. They are porting these packages or in enable the packages um, on, on the mainframe and they contribute these packages in the open build service of, of the open factory. So. Um, this is first done or will be done in the next days, hopefully, um, to in, in a home project and um, ISV project. Um, mature packages then can, um, can, can graduate to the internal or internal SUSE repository, which is called a package hub. From there, from the open build service and package hub, they, the, the packages are built in a manner for that, 
for, or in front of a package management, not built by your own. They are built uh, as well for competitor distros here by SUSE and uh, a customer or, a, or somebody who is interested can take it from there and can run it on the mainframe. This is how we want to start with OpenSUSE. And by the way, we already started with SUSE, not with OpenSUSE, but we already started with this community uh, 16 years ago because all our code from Linux on the mainframe is, um, is upstream. It's nothing hidden, no... Everything what we do is upstream and we give back to the community. So now the best thing, how you can participate on all of that. So how to join the open mainframe project. And I don't read now all the links. You can read it by yourself later on. We have links where you can find out, find out more of the individual projects we offer. Fill in the online form, every link here, and how you can participate at OpenSUSE for the mainframe. Now, what do we have projects running? We have, in the open mainframe, two parts of projects. One is an interns project. Um, this is currently staffing. We have uh, an eight-week eight, eight week period over the summer, and I, I think we can, there are as well payments done for that. Um, the focusing areas right now are blockchain support for the mainframe. It's improving Docker support for the mainframe and porting of various Linux monitoring tools. So, and the other thing is bounty source. Um, we, I just talk about the focus areas here because we have around eight or nine projects which are all, uh, just in the approval process of the Mo Open Mainframe uh, Steering Committee right now. Um, therefore, I cannot talk about the explicit pro pro projects, but they are working on defects in several open source packages, enablement uh, of the open source packages on the mainframe platform, implement library APIs for an open source package. I cannot tell the name right now because, as I said, it's not approved. And... Um, packaging work for the open, SUSE Open Build Service. All the individual projects and the approval process are right now from the Technical Steering Committee, and I hope that they will be approved in the next few days, weeks. So, what do you think, how many money we have right now in this, in this uh, project? I can tell you, $277,000, and, and we want to give out this money. So, this means, um, when you participate in this project, you can earn money. It's good for interns. This is a perfect thing. And now my final chart, I think. Who has a mainframe at home? This is what I expected, me not. But I know of a guy in somewhere in the US. Um, he bought a mainframe and um, this is a, you, you should look at the YouTube video how he brought this mainframe in his house. He really needs to open the wall to get it down and all these things. His parents was not amused. He showed this, I think, on Seattle this year, some in, at SUSE, or in a Linux con in Seattle. So look at, at YouTube, it's funny. Okay, I expected that nobody has a, a mainframe. I cannot get you in a mainframe, but I can get you on a mainframe. And this is the interesting thing. With Linux One, our new brand, we announced the Community Cloud. Students, developers, clients, ISV can access the Community Cloud and they get a part of a mainframe. And with this, it's easily to contribute in our open source engagement in the OpenSUSE build service, as well, build your server, build your packages there. Download it to the open to the community cloud where you get your own machine. Work on that, and you can help us in the community as well. You can work in the open mainframe project, and with a little luck, you can earn money on that. So, this is a real offering. I think for students, it's completely free, it's anyhow free. 
the access and, and the work you, you, you do on that, but it's, a, 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 it's not an only a 90 day, days period like we have for ISVs and clients. So if you get access, you have a long time access on that. So you can get your mainframe. As I already said, there's another way of getting a mainframe. You can download a Hercules uh, emulation on that. And you as well can uh, have a CPDT dongle, which you can plug in in your laptop. It's provided by IBM, but this costs. This is much easier. So this is the end. I made it in 45 minutes. I give you back 15 minutes of time. Um, if you have questions, I think I'm here. I can give you my card. If you want to have, uh, you get in touch with developers, for example, in the Böbling and Lab, you can talk to me, whatever you want. Thank you. First. Questions? I see you with the mic, microphone. Yeah, come on. Thanks. I yeah, it's working. Good morning. Yeah, thanks. That was very interesting. Uh, we, we saw a lot about the performance features of a mainframe. Yeah. I mean, performance is one side of the metal. What's the cost effect on the other hand? So it costs per transaction compared to a, uh, um, a, a Intel server, for example. Yeah. You mean the costs of a mainframe um, versus an in Intel? Uh, yeah, for example, if uh, one example was uh, Node.js is handling about 30 yeah, million I know what web transactions per day. Um, if I compare the costs per transaction mm -hmm. with, on a mainframe with an Intel server, what is the ratio there about? This is really, I don't have these numbers really right now, but I can get you these numbers if you want. Is this, sorry, I can't answer this. This is too deep in technical. I'm not a performance uh, guy, as I said before. These are more now marketing charts we have, but I know the guys measured it and I can give you the ratio if you want later on. Is this okay for you? Yeah, perfect, thanks. Okay, I'll give you my, my card. Or maybe our friends from Susan know a little bit more about it. Uh, I, I see Marcus um, can answer it. They have more of these ratios and measurements. So, good morning. I don't have a specific number, but when you do those calculations or comparisons, you need to take into account that you're not comparing a single machine or single transactions, yeah. but think more of a data center in a box. When you buy a mainframe, it's built, and that was the, the chart scaling multiple dimensions from processing power, memory, I.O. capacity. Um, when you combine those things, you typically earn the benefits of scalability and statistics you need to take into account the whole infrastructure. If you just go into the calculations, transaction costs, and triple it down through the whole infrastructure, like network connections or fiber channel attachments and storage, um, the cost may seem very high in the beginning, but if you look into data center type operations, um, there are lots of companies using the mainframe because they do real cost savings. It depends on what you do, how you start, and um, depending how we exploit it. So it's uh, typically a journey where people start, um, some of the companies we've seen um, listed there, uh, the banks, they live from high transactions. This comes also back from the 60s where that machine was built to do all these transactions. They have more incremental costs to bring in mainframe into the operations. And though there are the first adopters or those adopters who benefit most by combining um, workloads based on the traditional transaction uh, based workloads on ZOS combined with the Linux on the, on the mainframe exploiting different uh, or new applications, web application servings. So it, it, it really depends how you look at those costs um, and it's, uh, it's a complex scenario typically. Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, I have a question. If you see some interest, uh, interest in uh, 
uh, customers uh, to use OpenSUSE on mainframes, or if they are just want uh, enterprise one. And uh, so my question is, uh, do you start because you see some interest uh, or some uh, drive from customer or because you think it's a good idea and not based on uh, customer needs? Yeah, okay, so there is some interest. Yeah, that's answer my question. Thank you. Hello. My question is this. Um, we heard about a 10 years uptime for some case. So this enterprise has not uh, switched off or rebooted the mainframe for 10 years. They, this means that they are running their software on a 10 years old hardware. So I, my question is, how do enterprise customer behave with respect to this? Do they ask for a contract where they um, upgrade their machine every three or five years or they prefer to run the same thing on a 20 years old machine. itself runs now 10 years without any outage. Software for sure, they need to be maintenance on that. They stop a system, they go, they start a, a, a VOC system. So you need to differentiate between the hardware and the software. Yeah? But the hardware you can dynamically. Sometimes we have customers, um, this is an interesting point, we have customers, they don't even know that their hardware is defective. Our mainframe calls IBM from the customers, and then the technician guys go there, and they say, hey, you have a defect on the hardware, we need to change. So and the customer is surprised. This is how it happens. So, so divide hardware and mainframe, hardware and software. OK? Bertolt? Just like to add something to the OpenSUSE part of that uh, oh, story good. here, because I'm the one who did the initial setup. So we started with. OpenSUSE factory, and it's building to a very large degree. It's at um, OpenSUSE factory Z, uh, Z systems found, and we also just recently, when we set up the Leap 42.2, we also set up a ports project for mainframe there. So that's where you can find it actually. And it's uh, not too bad from build status, I'd say. But yes, we need some help there to get a number of packages really building. And uh, if you do it, we actually will get really good into that market, including stuff like Docker and Afras that would be the base for the open mainframe project to, to be building uh, uh, Docker appliances and that stuff. Um. Uh, I know that IBM internally has their own distribution for, for development. Is, are there any plans to switch from the internal driver to OpenSUSE? Um, our internal development driver, you think? 
development distribution. Internal, IBM in Böblingen. If you want to switch to OpenSUSE, <laughs> no plans right now, no. No plans, but um, uh, I think I'm not, I don't want to say where, where our development driver is based on right now, so it's not SUSE right now. <laughs> but we work tightly together here, so let's see what, what the future brings. So. So, I see no other question. I'm sweating here under these lights. Then once again, many thanks for your attention and that so many people came here on Sunday morning. If there are more questions and if you want to have my card, let me know, I'm here. Thanks a lot, bye.